He said, I want you to be able to tell me, when we solve quadratics, what are we solving for? When I tell you, solve this for me. You're solving for x. What does x mean? What does x mean? Okay, and in, uh, with linear stuff, we do identify the slope, okay? In linear stuff, we also identify the y-intercept, okay? Y-intercept, y equals x plus b, that's a very, that's just something we remember. I don't know why we remember that, but we do, okay? In 10 years, when you're doing something else, it has nothing to do with mathematics, for some reason, you're going to remember y equals x plus b. B is our y-intercept. Do I also have an x-intercept when it comes to a line? I do. I do. You have x-intercepts in parabolas. And that's what this is right here. All of these are parabolas. The reason they're parabolas is because they're square. When we solve quadratics, what we are solving for are the x-intercepts. We are solving where this graph crosses the x-axis. When I give you a very straight linear equation and I say solve for x, something like 4x plus 2 equals 7, you're still solving for an x-intercept. If you were to graph that linear equation with only an x in it, you would still be solving for that. So we are solving to find out where this graph crosses the x-axis. And if you'll remember, what is it that we always have to set these equal to? Zero. And I could, when we start talking about function notation, it could be x squared plus 8x plus 12 equals y. So when I've got my quadratic set equal to zero, what I'm actually doing is plugging in zero for y. And when, zero, when y is zero, what do I find? X intercepts. The intercepts are the x. So what we have been doing is solving to find out where it crosses the x-axis. And we are going to continue that. Um, there are four different ways. Well, and here, here it is. So this one right here, the answer to this one is negative 6 and negative 2. Okay, negative 6 and negative 2. So let's go ahead and factor that. So when I factor this, I have y equals x squared, or 0, because we're setting it equal to 0. 0 equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. And what are my two numbers? When I factor this, what are my two numbers? 6 and 2. And the reason it's 6 and 2 is because 6 plus 2 is 8 and 6 times 2 is 12. So when I factor that, x plus 6, x plus 2, I set each one of these equal to 0. And I get x equals negative 6, x equals negative 2. So when I graph this, and graphing is not something that we're doing, okay? So you, you'll graph quadratics if you take 144, okay? Um, but, but I want you to see what it is we're, we're doing. We're finding where this crosses the x-axis. That's what, what we're doing. Now, factoring has been your go-to. When you've been asked to solve this, the one thing that you always sit down and do is you try to factor it. Well, today we're going to look at other ways to solve this if you hate factoring or if you can't factor. Because sometimes we will run into problems that are either pro they're called prime or they can't be factored. Okay? So, there are four ways that we can solve a quadratic. We can graph it, which is what I just did. Okay? 
This is a graph of a quadratic, and we can identify where it crosses the x-axis. So we could graph it. The problem with graphing is it's really an estimate. Okay? As soon as you start dealing with numbers that are fractions, and definitely when we start dealing with radicals or complex numbers, we aren't going to be able to graph. Okay? The second way that we do it is by factoring. And we, we've done a lot of that. We did a ton of that in this semester. We did it by factoring. Okay? And you can continue to factor if, if it works. If you can factor, I would encourage you to factor. The other two ways that we're going to solve quadratics is by completing the square and using the quadratic formula. It does not matter if we graph factor, complete the square, or use the quadratic formula, you are going to get the same answer, no matter which way you do it, and every one of those answers is going to be my x-intercepts. That is where my graph is crossing the x-axis. So that is what's happening when we solve a quadratic. Okay? Can I move off the screen? Okay. So, we've already factored this. Okay, so we already solved this by factoring. Um, I did x plus 6 and x plus 2, is that right? Okay, and I got x equals negative 6 and x equals negative 2. Okay, so we know that the answer to this is negative 6 and negative 2. We know that's the answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the same problem and we're going to use completing the square. So. Here is my problem, x squared plus ax plus 12. Now this is a very straightforward completing the square. And I start completing with the square with one that is this straightforward, okay? Now, what number is in front of x squared? What number is in front of x squared? A one, okay? The number one is in front of x squared. What? type of number is in front of the x? What type of number is 8? Say that again. It is an even number. So look up here. Do you see how my a value is 1 and my b value is even? That is the most straightforward type of problem that you can use for completing the square. And I'll be very honest with you. If my A value is not 1 and my B value is not even, then I am probably not going to complete the square. I'm going to use the quadratic formula because it doesn't matter which method I use. What matters is um, that I do one of those four methods because I'm going to get the same answer no matter what. So. This is how we complete the square. And on your final exam, there will be a problem that says solve by completing the square. Okay? It will say solve by completing the square. So what we're going to do is we are going to solve this by completing the square. So I'm going to write the steps on one side, and then I'm going to do it on the other side. So completing the square. My first step in every single one of these is always going to be to set it equal to zero. That is going to be my first step. Set equal to zero. Okay? So when you are solving a quadratic, and we know it's a quadratic because we have it raised to the second power. That's how we know it's a quadratic, is because it's raised to the second power. Okay? Now, anytime you are solving a quadratic, whether you're going to solve by factoring, graphing, quadratic formula, or completing the square, you are going to want to have it set equal to zero. Once you get it set equal to zero, that's when you're going to decide which way you're going to solve this. That's when you're going to decide to factor, or complete the square, or do the quadratic formula. Okay? Once you've got it set equal to zero, that's when you decide. So. If I decide, oh, I can't factor this, 
I've got an A value that's 1, and I've got a B value that's even, I'm going to go ahead and complete the square. Now, this one can be factored, but there will be times that it can't be. Okay? And you might decide in that situation to complete the square. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to move the constant. What do I mean by constant? What do I mean by constant? What's my constant? The one without a variable. So your 12 is the constant. Move the constant to the right. Now, I have to keep everything equal. So how do I move that constant to the right? What do I have to do? Yeah, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. So I'm going to have x squared plus 8x equals negative 12. Okay, so this is step one right here. Ooh, okay, this is step one. I've got it set equal to zero. This is step two. I've moved my constant to the right. Now, step three. Okay, take half of B value, square it, and add that to both sides. Okay, so this is what I'm doing right now. So this is number three. This is number three. Eight is my B value. Eight is my B value. What is half of eight? Four. What is four squared? Sixteen. Okay? I take one half of my B value. I square it and then I add it to both sides. Because we're taking half of our B value, that's why it's helpful when it's even. It won't always be even. But when it's even, you're not dealing with fractions. Okay? So half of 8 is 4. 4 squared is 16. 16 is what I add to both sides. So I have plus 16 and plus 16. That's step three. Okay, now, by design, by design, I have created a perfect square trinomial here. Okay, I have created a perfect square trinomial. If you did not create a perfect square trinomial, then you have made a mistake. You want to create a perfect square trinomial right here, okay? I can factor x squared plus 8x plus 16. What two numbers multiplied together give me 16 and added together give me 8? 4 and 4. We did it that way on purpose because, okay, that's what we wanted to happen. X plus 4, X plus 4. What's negative 12 plus 16? Positive 4. Okay. So, can I rewrite X plus 4 times X plus 4 as X plus 4 squared? Can I rewrite that that way? Yeah. Do those two lines mean exactly, does this line right here and this line right here mean exactly the same thing? Yes, it does. Okay? So what I did in step four is I factored the left side and simplified the right. That's what I did. I factored the left side and I simplified the right. Now this is actually, I wrote step three right here. Um, this is actually step four because look at where step three is. Step three is when I added 16 to both sides, 
Okay, so it's written in a different spot, so just be sure you've got that written down. Okay, once you get here, you're in great shape. You're in super good shape by the time you get right here. My next step, step five, is I am going to take the square root of both sides. Okay, so I am going to take the square root of both sides. Now, this is a place that, student make, that students make mistakes. When I take the square root of x plus 4 squared, when I take the square root of that, I get x plus 4. But when I take the square root of 4, I've got to account for the positive and for the negative. Okay? So let's think about this. If I have x squared equals 4, okay, I know that 2 times 2 gives me 4, correct? What else gives me 4? That's exactly, we're taking the square root, so it has to be exactly the same. Negative 2 and negative 2. So when I take the square root right here, <coughs> I've got to take the plus and the minus value of that square root. This right here is where students make mistakes. Don't forget the plus or minus. Don't forget the plus or minus. So right here, when I take the square root, when I take the square root here, and when I take the square root here, you've got to do the plus or minus. You've got to have your plus or minus there, okay? So now I've got x plus 4 equals plus or minus 2, okay? And my number 6 step is to isolate the x. So that means I am going to move my 4 over. And how do I move that 4 over? Good. So I'm going to have negative 4 plus or minus 2. Any guesses on what step 7 is? Or simplify. Okay, we've got to simplify the rest of this. Now, what happens is students stop because they're so used to having, um, when they use completing the square, they're used to having a square root in completing the square. And so they stop right here. Now, sometimes, like if this was negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 3, then you would be finished. Okay? But I can keep going. And you'll see me write that on tests and quizzes. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. We've got, we can keep going here. Because what's the answer to this? What's the final answer here? Negative 2 and? When we factored this, what did we get as our final answer? Negative 2 and negative 6. Okay, so we're not there yet. So what this means right here is it means negative 4 plus 2 and negative 4 minus 2, because I can keep going. So negative 4 plus 2 gives me negative 2. Negative 4 minus 2 gives me negative 6. And that is exactly the same thing I got when I factored it. And it's exactly the same thing I got when I graphed it. So I have graphed it. I have factored it, and I have completed the square. And all three times, I got exactly the same thing. Okay? So, you want to make sure that you have this screen probably written down and a picture taken of it. You probably want both of those things. Okay? Can I move the screen? Okay, 
Am I good? I think I got all the cameras gone. Okay, so now we are gonna do the same exact problem, but we are gonna use the quadratic formula. We're gonna use the quadratic formula to solve the same problem. So we are solving this four different ways and we are gonna get the same answer every single time. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay? That is the quadratic formula. When we factored, when we graphed, and when we did completing the square, what was my first step in every single one of them? What did I have to do? Set it equal to zero. Okay? That's exactly what I had to do. I had to set it equal to zero. So that is my first set, step. Okay, that's my first step. Okay, my second step is to identify my A, B, and C values. Now, when you have your quadratic in standard form, in standard form is this right here, equal to zero. Your A, B, and C are your coefficients in front of each one of those. So I have A, X squared, plus B, X, plus C. That is standard form. My A value for the quadratic formula is what's in front of the X squared. My B value is what's in front of the X. And my C value is my constant. Okay? So my second step is to identify my A, B, and my C values. Okay, so my A is what? One, what's my B? And what's my C? I think I heard 12, okay? So I am just looking at what's in front of my X squared, what's in front of my 8X, and what's in front of my, and then what's my constant. I'm looking at the coefficients and the constants. Okay. Now, my third step, so this is step one. This is step two. Okay, step three is to plug values into quadratic formula. Okay, plug values into quadratic formula. So, I have negative eight plus or minus the square root of eight squared. minus four times A times C and all of that is over two times A. Okay? Now, what I tried to show you is the green is what I plugged in. You see the green is what I plugged in? The blue is part of the quadratic formula. Okay? So I took my A, B, and my C values, and I plugged them in. Students typically do completely fine up to this point. What is my fourth? What do you think I've got to do next? Say it again. Combine like terms and all that kind of stuff. We're going to call that simplify. Okay. 
Now, let me show you a couple of areas that students sometimes get stuck. Okay? Do you see how my eight right here is positive? In our next problem, that B value is going to be negative. So I've got the opposite of whatever eight is. In this situation, negative positive eight gives me negative. So I keep this. But if I've got a negative number there, I get in trouble there. I also get in trouble here. So keep an eye on that as we move to doing one with a negative value. This right here always confuses students. This is negative 4 times 1 times 12. Negative 4 times 1 times 12. Students like to lose a negative sign right there. Okay? So be careful. Those are the two areas that students make mistakes. So, here I've got negative 8 plus or minus the square root. What is 8 squared? What's 8 squared? 64. Okay. Then I have negative 4 times 1 times 12. What's negative 4 times 1 times 12? Forty-eight, negative forty-eight. Okay. Okay. So then I have negative eight plus or minus the square root. What's sixty-four minus forty-eight? Sixteen. Now, again, students like to stop right here because they assume. If they are doing the quadratic formula, that they're going to have an answer that looks like this. Sometimes you will. But do you see this right here? What's the square root of 16? 4. So I can keep going. Okay? I can keep going. So I've got negative 8 plus or minus 4 over 2. That means I have negative 8 plus 4 over 2. And I have negative 8 minus 4 over 2. Negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4 divided by 2 is what? Negative 2. Negative 2. Okay. And then what is negative 8 minus 4 over 2? Good. And is that what I got every other time I did this? Is that what I got every other time I do this? Yes. Okay? So it does not matter if you do quadratic formula, completing the square, factoring, or graphing, you're going to get the same thing. Remember that if you graph, if you graph, you're estimating, and there's really no way to be sure you're exact. <coughs> factoring probably should be your go-to. Factoring really <coughs> should be your go-to. It's much more straightforward. There's less opportunity for error. Completing the square will be on your final exam. You have to solve the problem using the completing the square. Completing the square is best used when A is 1 and B is even. A is 1 and B is even. Okay? Now, um, and then the quadratic formula you can use any time. So, can I move off this screen? Now keep these steps handy because you're going to need them. Here is my next one, and you've already solved this one. You've already solved this one. x squared minus 10x plus 24, that's number two. It was factorable. And when you factored it, the final answer that you got should have been four and six, your final answer. When we factor it, Okay, so when we factor this one, I've got a product of 24 and a sum of negative 10. So when I'm factoring it, what are my values? What are my two numbers when I'm factoring? What equals negative 10 when I add, positive 24 when I multiply? What are my two numbers? 
negative 6 and negative 4. Okay? So I have x minus 6 and x minus 4. Then when I solve, I get x equals 6 and x equals 4 when I solve. Okay? Now, I'm going to give you about three minutes to get started. You can try either one of these. Okay? You can try either one of these. But I'm going to give you about three minutes just to get started and see how far you get. You can do either one. Okay, I'm going to set my, my timer for three hours. Three minutes. I'm going to do both of these. Now, I just asked you to do one, but I'm going to do both of these. The first one that I'm going to do is completing the square. Completing the square. Now, I'm not going to write the steps out in words the way that I did on the first one. So, refer back to that if you need to. Um, so, the first thing that I'm going to do is I've got to make sure that I am set equal to zero. Okay? I'm always going to make sure I'm set equal to zero. So, I have x squared. Uh, minus 10x plus 24 equals 0. Okay? That is your first step always. Is set your, your quadratic equal to 0. Make sure it's in standard form. Okay? Now, my second step is I'm going to take that 24 and I'm going to move it to the other side. Move that 24 to the other side. So I'm subtracting 24 from both sides. So I have x squared minus 10x equals negative 24. Okay? 
x squared minus 10x equals negative 24. Now, I know that I'm going to put something right here. That's why I leave that spot. So, my next step is I take half of negative 10, square it, and add that to both sides. Now, be careful. What is one half of negative 10? Negative 5. Negative 5. Okay? Half of negative 10 is negative 5. What is negative 5 squared? 25. Negative times a negative is a positive. So I am adding 25 to both sides. Okay? I am adding 25 to both sides. Now I am going to factor this. This turned into a perfect square trinomial because we wanted it to. By design, we created a perfect square tri trinomial. And then I've got to simplify this over here. Okay? X squared minus 10x plus 25 factors, and if you need to write this step down, you can, to x minus 5 times x minus 5. Okay, x minus 5 can be written as x minus 5 squared. Okay? My next step is I take the square root of both sides. When I take the square root of this side, what do I have to remember? Plus or minus. Okay? You've got to remember your plus or minus. Okay? So I'm going to take the square root of both sides and don't forget your, your plus or minus right there. Okay? What is the square root of 1? 1. Okay, the square root of 1 is 1 because 1 times 1 is 1. So I am going to have plus or minus 1 and I have gotten rid of my square root. My next step is to add 5 to both sides. Okay, that gives me x equals 5 plus or minus 1. I can keep going. There is not a square root right here. There's not an i, which we'll talk about on Thursday. So I can keep going. Okay? So I'm going to have, whoops, so I am going to have 5 plus 1, and I am going to have 5 minus 1. So my final answer here is 6, 5 plus 1 is 6, 5 minus 1 is 4. So this is my final answer. Is that what I got when I graphed? Is that also what I got when I factored? Good. And it will be what we get when we do the quadratic formula. Okay? So, um, quadratic formula. Negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. What is my a value? Good. b value? Negative 10. That negative 10 is going to give us a few headaches, so we're going to pay attention to that. And what's my C value? What's my C value? 24. Okay. I want you to pay attention to that B value. <coughs> it's going to give us a few headaches in more than one spot. Okay? So, I have negative B. What is B? Negative 10. So do you see that right there? That's the first place that gives us a headache. You have negative, negative 10. Okay? Then I have plus or minus the square root of b squared, and you need to write it like this. If you don't write it like this, you are going to make mistakes. Do you see how I have that b value in parentheses? What is my b value? Negative 10. What happens here is students don't put that b in parentheses, 
and they end up with negative 100 right there, and it's not negative 100. Okay, so I have b squared minus 4 times a times, what's my c value? 24. Okay, and that is all over 2 times 1. Okay, now look at this carefully. Look at this carefully, and I do these in different colors on purpose. This is a huge place that students make mistakes. This negative, negative. Okay, highlight that with a star beside it. This is the other place students make mistakes, right here. You are squaring a negative number. When you square a negative number, what do you get? Positive, always. Students sometimes get these, this computation right here, but we talked about that on the last one. Okay, so negative, negative 10 is positive. So I have positive 10 plus or minus the square root. What is 10 squared? 100. <clears throat> Minus 4 times 1 times 24. What is that? What's 24 times 4? 96. Good. And that's negative. So it's 96 or 100 minus 96 because we've got negative 4 times 1 times 24. Okay, 100 minus 96 is what? So I have 10 plus or minus the square root of 4 over 2. Can I take the square root of 4? Yes. So I have 10 plus or minus 2 over 2. Can I erase completing the square so we can look at this clearly? Okay. So I'm going to erase completing the square because I really want us to look at this step by step. So what I've got is I've got 10 plus or minus 2 over 2. That's 10 plus 2 over 2 and 10 minus 2 over 2. 10 plus 2 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. 10 minus 2 is 8, over 2 is, it's the same exact thing I got every other time I did it. So it doesn't matter which way you do it, you're going to get the same thing. Okay? Now, I'm moving on to number 3. I'm moving on to number three. Okay. Now, when you graph this, um, you, you've got to have it really set equal to zero when you graph it so that I can put the y in. So all I did was I moved the 11 over. Okay? The way that I did this to graph it really isn't what I would recommend that you do. What I would do in order to graph it is I would FOIL. Okay, so we're going to do that now because before you can decide what to do, you've got to have it set up in standard form. So here we go. Um, x times x is x squared. x times 9 is 9x. Negative 1 times x is minus 1x. Negative 1 times 9. Uh, negative 1 times 9 is minus 9. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms. And then what do I need to do with that 11? Subtract it. Okay. So then I'm left with x squared plus 8x minus 20. Now, I'm telling you right now, you are going to have a problem similar to this on your homework or on your, on your final exam. You're going to have two binomials multiplied together. And that's going to equal 
11. Okay, that's what's going to happen. So, now you can't really see this as well here. So I'm going to rewrite it here. What did I, was it plus 8x or minus? And then it was minus 20? Okay. Here you can see it a little bit better. I'm crossing the x-axis at negative 10, and I'm crossing the x-axis at positive 2. Say that one more time. This is not linear. Um, so these aren't linear at all. This is a quadratic. And so they're not going to cross. Okay. They're, just, they're just crossing the x-axis. Okay. I think you're thinking about parallel and perpendicular lines. <laughs> okay. So I can factor this. I can factor it. Okay. Um, my two numbers are positive 10 and negative 2. Because 10 times negative 2 is negative 20, 10 plus negative 2 is positive 8. Okay? So then my answer here is negative 10, positive 2. That's when I factored it. I get the same thing when I graph it. Okay? So be sure you know what to do when you are given a quadratic that is not set equal to 0. Be sure you know what to do. Okay, so completing the square and quadratic formula. Our first step, as always, make sure it's equal to Oh, no, that's not right. I've, <laughs> my brain, it's plus 8x minus 20, right? Is once we've got it set equal to zero? Okay, so my first thing, I move that 20 over. Okay. What's half of 8? What's half of 8? 4 and 4 squared is 16. So I add 16 to both sides. I factor, okay? When I take the square root of both sides, I'm gonna get plus or minus six. The square root of 36 is six. Don't forget your plus or minus. Don't forget your plus or minus. My next step is to move my four over. So then I'm left with x equals negative four, plus or minus six. Negative four plus six, negative four minus six. Did I get the same thing that I always get? Okay, quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac Okay, my A value, what's my A value? One, what's my B value? And my C value. Good. Okay, so negative eight plus or minus eight squared. Whoops, that's eight to the sixth, right? How about eight squared? Okay. So, negative 8 plus or minus the square root. What is 8 squared? 64. Okay. 8 squared is 64. Minus 4 times 1 times negative 20. Be careful. Negative 4 and negative 20 is what? Positive 80. Positive 80. Okay? So I have 64 
plus 80 all over 2. This 64 and 80 becomes 144. What's the square root of 144? 12. And that is something that I'll expect of you. Remember, up to 12 times 12. So negative 8 plus or minus 12 over 2. That's negative 8 plus 12 over 2. Negative 8 minus 12 over 2. And that gives me 2 and negative 10. Okay. Now I'm going to show you why we've been doing this. Everything that we've done so far today, we can solve by factoring. The next one, you cannot solve by factoring. Okay? The next one, you cannot solve by factoring. You are still going to look at it the same way. You're still going to make sure it's set equal to zero. That's always going to be your first step. Is this set equal to zero? Yes, it's set equal to zero. You are going to try to factor it. Okay? My product is negative four. My sum is negative two. After a little bit of a headache, you may realize that there are no two numbers multiplied together that give you negative four and added together give you negative two. There are no two numbers. So factoring is not an option. Problems like this are the reason that we have to know how to do quadratic formula or completing a square. This one is a good candidate for completing the square because my A value is 1, and my B value is negative two, is an even number. That's why it's a good candidate for completing the square. So I'm going to do this one by completing the square. Okay? So I've got x squared minus 2x equals what? Okay? Then, I am going to take half of negative 2. What is half of negative 2? Negative 1. What's negative 1 squared? Positive 1. So, I am adding 1 to both sides. So, I have plus 1 and plus 1. Okay? I factor the left-hand side. I simplify the right-hand side, okay? x minus 2x plus 1 factors to x minus 1 squared. By design, we created a perfect square trinomial. I take the square root of both sides. So I'm left with x minus 1 equals plus or minus the square root of 5. And here is where things change. Here is where things are different. I cannot simplify the square root of 5. It is an irrational. It doesn't go any further. I leave it plus or minus the square root of 5. My next step is to isolate my x. So what do I add to both sides? 1. Okay? This is a situation where you cannot go any further. This is your final answer. You may want to write it as x plus 1, I mean, one, uh, 1 plus the square root of 5 or 1 minus the square root of 5, but 1 plus or minus the square root of 5, that's as far as you can go. You're done. Okay? What happens is students assume this can't be simplified, so you've got to look and see if it can. On all the others, we were able to simplify it, but on this one, we can't. So this right here is my final answer. If you want to break it up into the two of these, you can. Okay, and we solved this one by completing the square. 
if you had chosen to do it by the quadratic formula, you would have been fine. You could have. Okay? But you don't have to. Can I move off the screen? Okay. My next one. I've got 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Now, I would try to factor it. What's my product here? It's not negative 3. What's my product? Negative 6. Because you've got to do your 2 times your negative 3. Okay? So negative 6 is your product. You're not going to find two numbers multiplied together to give you negative 6 and added together to give you 4. So you've got to do completing the square or um, the quadratic formula. Now, my advice in this one is to do the quadratic formula. Any ideas why? Yes, sir? Because uh, it's 2 and not a 1. Because it's 2 and not a 1. I don't have an A value of 1. Because I don't have an a value of 1 here, in order to do completing the square, I would have to get an a value of 1. And what that would mean is I would divide everything by 2. And when I divided everything by 2, I would end up with some fractions. And we all know how we feel about fractions. Okay? So the reason I, because of that reason right here, because my a value is not 1, it doesn't matter that my b value is even. It has to be both. My A value has to be 1 and my B value has to be even. Because I don't have both of those things, I would solve this using the quadratic formula. Okay? So, I've got negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. What is my A value here? And that's new for us. What's my B value and my C value? Okay, yes ma'am. Good, so if, if labeling throws you off, just put an A, a B, and a C. And that'll help you. Thank you. Okay, so I have negative B, and my B value is 4, okay, plus or minus the square root, okay, so I have B squared, then I have minus 4 times my A value, and that's new for us, having an A value that's not 1. And then I've got times my C value. Now, my C value here is what? It's negative, okay? So don't lose that. Don't lose that negative. Then I am dividing it all by 2 times... So I don't know if the colors are helpful or not helpful, but the red is the formula, the blue color is the numbers that I'm plugging in. Okay? So, negative 4 plus or minus, what is 4 squared? 16. Negative 4 times 2 times negative 3. What is it? Good. Okay. So I have minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 40 over 4. Many of you will want to stop right there. But you're not done. 40 can be simplified. The square root of 40 can be simplified. Okay. 
If I were to simplify the square root of 40, I could break that down to four times 10. What's the square root of four? Two. Okay, we did all this in chapter five. So this can be rewritten as negative four plus or minus two on the square root of 10 over four. And I want you to look. Look right here. Two goes into four twice. Two goes into negative four, negative two times. Two goes into two, one. Don't mess with the square root of 10. You're only messing with the stuff on the outside. So your final answer to this is negative two plus or minus the square root of 10 over two. That's your final answer. You can only simplify when you've got something here, here, and here. And they all, this has to be outside. When it's inside, you can't simplify. It's gotta be here, here, and here.